welcome everyone. Um, if you're in the UK, welcome to your early lunch. Uh, but it's great to be here and that I'm um, looking forward to uh, to sharing with you and, and perhaps uh, hopefully being able to answer some questions as well and have some, some discussion. Uh, so a little bit about our organisation. Um, Show Racism the Red Card is a education charity. Uh, it's an anti-racism charity. We're based in the in the UK. We're often kind of seen as people often say, oh, the, the football one, the football charity. Uh, and we, we do have connections and, and links with uh, with footballers and football clubs, but it's kind of, that's not really our our kind of you know our, our daily our daily diet is about the education that, that we deliver. Um, the reason why we, we have the football connection is is the uh, the organisation was begun back in the nineteen nineties by uh, a footballer who played for Newcastle United. His name is Shaka Hislop. Um, Shaq is from the Caribbean. He, he played for Newcastle. He also played for Trinidad and Tobago uh, in the World Cup in the 1990s. He had an experience after a football match um, one evening in Newcastle city centre. He was putting fuel in his car at a petrol station. His wife and, and baby were in the car and a group of young people across the road um, started shouting racial abuse at him on account of the colour of his skin. Shaka ignored the uh, the abuse, but the group of young people came closer across the road. They came up to him, and at that point, they recognised him, and they were Newcastle United supporters. Uh, they asked him if he could shake his hand. They asked him, asked him if he could could have his auto, have the, they could have his autograph, uh, which Shaka declined to do. But what he did do, he went away and reflected on the situation and thought, well, if they see me as a role model, if I'm going to get this kind of hero worship. Perhaps I can use that status to uh, to encourage young people to uh, to not engage in that sort of behaviour and to educate around what racism is, what we can all do about it, about the impact of it um, and how we can work towards making it go away or in footballing terms to, to show it the red card. So Shaka began working with youth groups and schools in the northeast of England uh, 28 years ago. Uh, and that's how the organisation began. We now have teams in the northeast, the northwest of England and the southeast of England. There's a team in Wales and there's a team in Scotland. Um, and we work with, as you can see, we work in schools with primary schools, secondary schools, sixth forms. We also work with teachers delivering teacher training and we work with adults in the workplace as well, delivering our, our kind of varied uh, programme of, of anti-racist education. We do still have the links with the football clubs. We use players as role models and other role models to help deliver the message and also to um, to attend kind of high profile events where we use, uh, for example, football clubs will host host annual events and schools will be able to come and, and kind of share share learning um, and work on quite often on what we what we call it an allyship program where they are actually actively creating responses and plans and ways in which they, they can challenge racism in their, in their own uh, schools and workplaces and so on. The, uh, the approach that we use is, is kind of based on acknowledging our own biases, understanding the stereotypes and the judgments that we all make uh, and how those judgments can lead to words and to actions, how we can challenge those preconceptions. So always using kind of our own identity as a starting point and that works well with young people um, and with adults as well. Um, partly the reason why I'm here today is because I was privileged in the back in the autumn to attend a SEGI um, training in Krakow, which was a, a fantastic experience, part of the um, networks for overcoming anti-Semitism. So that the training was anti-bias training to overcome anti-Semitism. Um, and the emphasis on that training was all about identity and personal experiences the images and messages that we receive throughout our lives and how those can shape our understanding of other people's experience uh, and position us alongside people who, who uh, have been discriminated against. Um, what was really special about that training it, as well was that it, it kind of validated what, what we do with Show Race in the Red Card because it, it was great to see that, that those organisations were taking a, a kind of similar approach to introducing anti-bias training um, which they use for, for challenging all forms of discrimination. And it was certainly um, enlightening for me to learn so much more about anti-Semitism, about Jewish culture, uh, about myself as well, and, and, and all kinds of aspects of, of, um, of learning, and because obviously we're all, we're all constantly learning, and that's an important part of our, our mindset within the, within the show Race and the Red Card um, organisation. So within our training, uh, when we're thinking about what we include, um, whether we're working with 
schools, with, with adults, with people in the workplace, whether it's online training or or face to face training. Um, we aim to, to deliver bespoke training, bespoke training to each organisation, depending on, on their kind of needs and what they want. So um, on, and on the nature of their requests. Obviously, sometimes people will contact us and say, we'd like you to come in and de deliver training, particularly with this as a priority. When we get there, we might actually find actually the training would have been better from this standpoint, or you might have benefited from a bit more of this. So, so we try to be very flexible, flexible in our planning and also, also um, on the day in terms of, of what we include. Uh, and that does include different types of racism. Uh, we often work on kind of scenario based training so that we can look at examples of situations and to challenge people to think about how they can work as an ally in those situations. How will they support the people who are being targeted and how will they also challenge um, challenge the racism? And we, we make sure we, we include different types of racism. We, we have a definition that talks about um, ethnicity and how that includes people's skin colour, religion, uh, their nationality, their culture, and so on. So we try to, to make sure we have a, a broad broad coverage of different types of, of scenario and different types of racism. Um, we're, we're a small organisation and our, our regional group is, is, is small, so we don't all necessarily have the lived experience and the uh, expertise to, to talk about in a, in a totally knowledgeable kind of authentic way about different forms of, of racism, including anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, uh, the racism that's uh, experienced by Roman Gypsy people and, and Irish travellers in this country as well. So, so we use um, guest speakers and, and allies and other contacts to kind of support us in our delivery. Uh, and that's really important and, and kind of really helpful, um, helpful aspect of, of what we do in our training. Obviously, since October, uh, there's been an upsurge, certainly in this country, I'm sure, across Europe and, and across the world in, in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Uh, so what organi our organisation's stance is uh, what you can see on the screen. So if you want to read read through that, um, Sharice and Red Card condemns all forms of violence in light of current global events, the rise in anti-Semitic hate crime and anti-Muslim hate crime statistics in the UK is deeply concerning. We continue to deliver our important programmes of educational work across the UK to tackle racism in, in all its, its forms. Um, and what's been difficult in this country as well is, is to see that uh, politicians and people in positions of power refusing to, uh, to call anti-Semitism anti-Semitism, refusing to call Islamophobia Islamophobia and re refusing to call uh, racism racism when that's that's clearly what it is so uh, it's really important that, that we're sharing those messages and, and, and helping people to understand um, what is actually going on and that it's that, that trying to get rid of this this idea that to, to accuse somebody of being racist is a really terrible thing racism is a terrible thing and accusing somebody of it is um, is sadly part of, of you know what we have to do and obviously the way we do that um, the way we challenge racism isn't just about accusing people it's about it's about engaging people in conversations and that's probably the most important aspect of what we say in our training whether that's with young people or adults we don't have all the answers but we do have a lot of questions and what we hope to do is facilitate those conversations to take place and empower people to be able to go away and continue um, having those conversations so what I'd like to share is a couple of case studies of work we've done recently, one from a school with young people and one from uh, some, some adult training that we've done. Um, so one of the schools in our, in our region is Manchester Grammar School. It's a grammar school uh, for boys. It has a junior school department. Um, what we've been fortunate enough to do with, with that school is to be able to revisit them every year and work with, with young people as, as they get older. Quite often, sadly, we, we visit a school or a workplace, we see the people there once, uh, um, we, you know, we might not go back again, or we might not go back for, you know, for, for some time. Um, so we're seeing the same, the same young people year on year. Um, so we've been doing that for three years. So the, the children in year six, which is the, the final year of primary school, uh, 10 and 11 year olds, they've, they've now had three, three annual workshops as, as, a, as a cohort. Um, so I'm going to share what we did with them because what, what happened with that school was they approached us this year and said it'd be great if you can come back again but actually we've got some particular some particular sort of instance that we want you to to address 
Um, there are there are there is a Jewish community in that area. There's there's quite a big uh, Muslim community. It's a very diverse school in it in its makeup. Um, and what they said was, there's been some issues with kind of people being using the word racism when it's maybe not appropriate. Perhaps suggesting that comments and things that have taken place are Islamophobic or anti-Semitic when maybe they aren't, and that they wanted to kind of give some clarity to this this group of, of uh, young people. In particular, there was an incident where the teacher had, had spoken to me on the phone before um, before we attended to help to plan the, the session. Uh, she said there was a particularly vocal group of Muslim boys in year six. Um, and, and one of the conversations that they and and some other boys were involved in was around um, was was around the three uh, three different Abrahamic religions and how Jesus uh, features it in all of those religions. And, and one boy had apparently said, "Well, how how can that be? How can he be in all three religions?" And somebody had accused him of being racist. And that child went home upset, and the parents contacted the school. Um, and the teacher had said, "You know, that's that's the kind of thing that we really want help with 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 addressing." Um, and initially, our initial reaction was, well, isn't that great that that conversation was taking place, first of all, in, you know, in uh, in the playground or in the classroom, wherever it was. But yeah, but also that, yeah, it's important to enable those young people who perhaps partly through our training in previous years and perhaps for other reasons are comfortable talking about racism. But we want to make sure that it's, it's kind of in, informed and it's accurate in, in, in the conversations um, that they had or, or were having. So part of what we did with them that day, we shared our, our definition of racism. We have different different versions of this definition depending on on age groups and so on. Uh, but this explains that what what we think makes up somebody's ethnicity, how uh, racism could be defined as treating people differently or, or unfairly because of those characteristics um, about people thinking they're superior and the historical kind of roots of that. Uh, that it's about impact rather than an intent, and then it often happens to minority groups. That was kind of a reminder because we'd have explored that in previous sessions with with this this group of boys. Anyway, what we felt we would do then was was rather than try and um, tiptoe around the subject, we'd say, okay, well, what what do you know about anti-Semitism? What do you know about Islamophobia? What's your understanding of of those those words? This is a group of um, ninety about 90 uh, young people in a, in a, in a hall. So they were, they were split off into tables and groups. And there was lots of, what was great was when we asked that question, um, there was a buzz of excitement around the question, almost as if it was like, yes, we're, we're going to get to discuss what we want to discuss. And that, and that, that felt really positive. Um, a lot of the responses were, were quite mature as well. We had young people saying, um, why, why is it called Islamophobia? Because a phobia is a fear, and yet, and yet we're talking about hatred towards people. So that was really encouraging to hear that, um, and, so, and some quite sophisticated discussion and um, willing, willingness to listen to one another, which is which is really really important. So, so they gave us their kind of understanding of what they think those words mean, and um, e examples of, of how that's looked either. Within their own daily experience, or from what they've what they've seen and heard going on, and then we shared with them some examples that we thought maybe one or maybe the other. Um, what was really encouraging was that, that almost straight away, quite a lot of those young people were able to pick out two of those examples and say, "Well, actually, I I don't think that one is either." Um, and if you look at the in the bottom left. Daniel says he doesn't agree with the way the Israeli government treats Palestinian people. That's criticism or, or a, a, a comment about the Israeli government, not about Jewish people, and it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't qualify as being an anti-Semitic comment in in our in our view. Uh, similarly, with the top right, Fred's interested in the five pillars of Islam and asks his Muslim friend Abdullah about them, just like the conversation that those boys were having about Jesus. Asking somebody a question about their religion clearly isn't uh, isn't discriminatory, and it and it's kind of a positive thing. But the other the other examples on on the screen are um, in all our training when we when we're sharing examples like this, what we want people to think about is how they would respond, how they would act as allies within that situation, how to challenge, um, and importantly, the emphasis is on not just on how you challenge the perpetrators how we support the uh, how the people who've been targeted and how we can be a good ally towards them. So in each of those situations, there's one about what you would do with, with a Jewish student who was, uh, when somebody was supposedly making a joke, 
and we hear a lot about jokes and banter and we've we've never heard an example where we can say actually yeah that that is just a joke or just banter uh you know it's always a racist comment uh, and the other one about a muslim girl who's being teased about uh, about wearing a hijab in school by other young people so we had a, a range of responses about what children felt they should do in that situation why they should act how they should support uh, what we've used regularly in recent years is a challenge toolkit and part of that is you know you can ask people to rephrase uh, what they've said if you think they've used inappropriate terminology you can question people about what do you mean by that why do, have you thought about the, the possible impact of what you said we can inform and educate and that's certainly the most important of our role and if we can encourage other people to be able to to share their knowledge as well that's really important we encourage direct challenge if that's not appropriate or people don't feel comfortable with that and indirect challenge to report racism and also to withdraw from the situation. However, we, we've had conversations a while back in our Northwest team about using a toolkit and about wouldn't it be great if, if we had an actual toolkit and we had you know, a tool belt and a, and a toolbox and so on. So we didn't go that far, but what we have introduced recently is, um, is using a, a, a virtual toolkit, if you like. And what we would do is show these show these tools on the screen without the comment and ask the young people, how would you use a pencil? How would you use a saw? How would you use a pair of goggles as part of your anti-racist allies toolkit? Um, the answers on the screen are our own ones that the young people come up with far more imaginative and, and inventive ideas, which are great. Once they get onto the idea that is it's uh, it is kind of a metaphorical, it's not that we'd use the hammer to, you know, to attack somebody because they, they made a racist comment. Um, so in in that scenario in the school, we had young people come out and, and tell us about well, I would I would use uh, the goggles to to enable the perpetrator to see through the other person's eyes, or or maybe to uh, use the torch to shine a light on the problem. Um, they'd say things like, I'd use a spirit level to level things up and make people equal. Uh, use the helmet as protection, and so on. Uh, somebody actually said, I'd use the the screwdriver to deconstruct racism and rebuild society um, in a, in a fairer way. So it's great to see that sort of creativity and, and imagination um, taking place. So that was that was a, a very positive experience where we were, where we were able to deliver kind of bespoke um, day of training for a specific need. Um, and what we're what we're currently awaiting is is um, is a report on the uh, on how that's how that's been received because the the young people uh, took part in a in a pre a pre training survey and and there's. There's going to be a post survey. Just a shame we don't have the results to share with you that from yet, but we'll get some uh, we'll get some feedback from the school about that. Um, secondly, what a lot of what we do is is with unions or, or work with adults in the workplace. Uh, Unison is is a, a union that are particularly supportive of a, of a lot of our work. We also work with teacher unions. Um, we've worked with health service, uh, probation service, uh, and so on. With this particular uh, with this particular series of training, um, we run an ambassador program, which involves usually involves either two to three hours every week for six, once a week for six weeks, or sometimes we do that in an intensive program over two or three days, so that people can become ambassadors, uh, anti-racist ambassadors within within their own workplace. We also do an anti-racist captains similar program for for people in secondary schools. Um, so as part of this Unison program, uh, we incorporated the the uh, SEGI um, networks for overcoming antisemitism training um, aspect of that into it, which involved. Uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of some of the some of the activities. So history of my images. What messages or images did you receive about Jews and Judaism as a child during your adolescence as an adult? Um, and the time when people had time to reflect on that and go away and discuss and come back and talk about similarities and differences between their own experiences growing up and how that's impacted on their understanding nowadays, um, how that feeds into their, their knowledge and understanding of, of Jewish culture and Judaism. And we also did the same activity on a different day for um, our understanding of is Islam and Muslim people, and also our understanding of um, Gypsy, Romani, and uh, traveler people as well. We investigated the stereotypes, what they look like, the historical kind of background to those, why they exist, and how they're perpetuated today, not just surrounding anti Semitism, but also surrounding um, 
Islamophobia as well, and how they feed into the pyramid of hate. So how stereotyping can lead to those other other kind of um, well, what leads to atrocities at, at, at the end of the day. We think about media bias and about historical bias. An example on the screen there of how an image from uh, Europe in the 1930s compares to an image from uh, Europe recently um, and the portrayal of, of Jewish people in a, in a stereotypical way. Um, another example would be within the, uh, within the media nowadays and how newspaper headlines, certainly in this country, um, can reinforce bias. This is an example of two, uh, two terrorist acts, both people who, who killed large numbers of, of innocent people. The one on the left is depicted as an angelic boy who through, somehow through society's fault rather than his own, grew into an evil far, far right mass killer who could then take the lives of multiple people in, in mosques in New Zealand compared to uh, a terrorist who took the lives of people outside the House of, House of Commons, uh, but he's portrayed in a totally dehumanised way. Um, and the, the, the text, the font, the imagery, the whole presentation of those two stories are completely different um, because of the ethnicity of the people involved. And that, that's how an example of how uh, within the press we can see people uh, portrayed in different ways. And that, that unfortunately adds to the bias and stereotyping that, that goes on. So within that training for those ambassador groups, uh, we kind of led up to the questions of, of whether pe people felt that they learned more about stereotypes and the, and the communities that were discussed, whether that any of those myths were dispelled, and if so, which ones. Um, one of the comments that one of the people made who worked in a school was um, around um, Holocaust Memorial earlier this year, and they said, oh yeah, we uh, we made an active decision not to do anything about it and not to talk about it in, in our school because we felt we didn't want to have those difficult conversations or, or start off those problematic discussions. Um, and the person who was telling us about it, who doesn't actually work at that school anymore, had said, you know, that was disappointing, but they, they kind of understood where it came from. Um, we just felt that was that's the, the sort of thing that we we really want to undo and we want to we want to start those problematic conversations really rather than rather than shy away from them. Um, so there's there's a, there's a need for us to to um, you know to 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 address that. That's partly why our high high profile events and our perhaps use of role models of footballers and so on um, is a positive thing because that can encourage and stimulate those those sorts of discussion. Um, so we, we have these events at football clubs. You can see there um, where Red Day, which is our annual one of our annual events uh, at Manchester United Football Club, and also an event that took place in partnership with uh, a theatre company called Ad Arts, uh, who delivered a, a, a powerful performance um, about racism uh, alongside us doing, doing our workshops. And, and the power of um, partnership working is, is really something that, that, we, uh, that we like to embrace. Um, I think it was mentioned earlier about my in, in my other role, I work with Tramway Rovers Football Club and an organisation called Wirral Dean Centre, which is a, a mosque and community centre in, in the Birkenhead area, which is just uh, just across the River Mersey from, from Liverpool. So the image on the right shows um, a, a show race in the red card day that we did in partnership with those organisations. Uh, it took place in November, so we had a, an Islam, Islamophobia Awareness Month um, theme to the day and we had a Muslim speaker from Wirral Dean Centre who was able to talk about stereotyping and about their own experiences. Uh, we had a local author coming in as well and, and talking about how children could use, use their voice um, and also the, a couple of representatives of the football club to kind of help, to help deliver, the, uh, deliver the, the, the positive message. On the left, uh, from Holocaust Memorial, we actually we held an event for schools on Holocaust Memorial Day. Uh, but the, the theme was about genocide in general and, and how about how that we you know, we need to understand that, that genocide can happen anywhere, anytime, and that, it, that it's something that we all need to to work towards dispelling. Um, the gentleman in the photograph is the chairman of Tramway Rovers, Mark Palios. He was formerly a chairman of the Football Association. And he, he's a great speaker. And he made a couple of really, really good points. He talked about having a, a Catholic upbringing and being told to, to love your neighbour. And he said, I don't remember there being a menu or a list of priorities of, of the order in which we uh, we love those neighbours. So so he he spoke really well about how to how to embrace um, 
how to em embrace diversity and how the football club works in partnership with the Dean Centre um, to promote that. We were actually the second football club in, in the country to host Eid prayers on the football pitch last uh, round about this time last year and will again uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks time. Uh, what Mark did share was that actually after, after that event, which was really well supported, there was about 700 people attended. Uh, there was a very small group uh, from a local church who, who were upset that that happened uh, and actually asked if they could come onto the pitch on the next match day to, to perform an excommunication. He, he did refuse. He said they'd be welcome to do what they like outside the confines of the stadium. But, it, but he kind of made his point that, uh, you know, the club is doing everything it can to be welcoming. Um, and that you know we, we want everyone in the community to, to work together to to celebrate that so there's an image of the prayers on the pitch there uh, the football club and the dean center also uh have a, an annual um memorial football tournament for in for uh for remembering srebrenica charity which is there's an image of there uh and they host a an annual christmas party for children from different backgrounds I just like that image at the bottom that you got Santa Claus and a girl wearing hijab, both doing their uh, kind of football workout, workout together. Um, so partnerships are really important to our organisation. We've uh, we've developed a partnership with Manchester Jewish Museum, uh, and there's an image there of the the beautiful um, the beautiful venue. Um, we've also uh, started to to make connections with the National Holocaust Museum, who had a had a touring. Uh, a touring uh, exhibition that came to, to Manchester uh, quite recently. We're developing plans with solutions, not sides as well. So we can all observe each other's work and kind of see see what sort of thing each other does. Um, and Sharon Booth from Solutions Not Sides was on here just, just recently and she talked about supporting each other's organisations and how we can make make referrals to each other's in, in, in response to questions about things like anti-Semitism when we might be delivering something else and the questions come up so how we can maybe work together and network and, and support each other. Um, Sharon also had a brilliant um, comment about definitions and about how we need to stop trying to find the, the perfect definition of, of racism and of anti-Semitism and of Islamophobia and so on because, because there probably isn't a, a perfect one. But we work with what we work with and, and um, hopefully we can, we can make positive change um, as a result of that. So that's just a, an, an overview of what we do and a couple of case studies. Um, hopefully the, the message comes through of, of how allyship is, is really important to us um, and how um, we, we're trying to address racism in all its forms and that those specific forms of racism, including anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, are things that we, we're, we're developing our provision on as well. And, and we look forward to working in partnership with anyone who can, can contribute to, to what we were doing.